Good morning. Happy Easter, everybody. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen, risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today for this service, we'll use this ordered service. It should have everything you need in there. We're going to do a few baptisms today. We're going to sing a lot. And we're going to even do some of the uh, sung responses in Lakota that we use. Our grandparents and great-grandparents and great-great-grandparents used to do. Uh, it's always nice to do. And if you're not familiar with how we do church here, uh, we sit in a circle. And the arrangement, uh, my uncle came up with this. It's laid out kind of like a teepee. So that um, only, uh, we're doing it backwards. We're facing west. But <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. The, yeah. I'm having a hey okay day. I apologize. <laughs> so we're facing east where the sun rises. And I, uh, incidentally, when Jesus returns, that's where he's coming from. And that's why churches face east. It's also why cemeteries, when we bury uh, the dead, they're faced uh, with their feet pointing east so that when Jesus comes, if they were to stand straight up, then they'd be facing him which is kind of cool. I always like that. So um, when we move in the circle, we try to go clockwise as much as we can. I'm not really picky about it. I'm not going to yell at you or anything goofy like that. Uh, we do ask the gentlemen, you remove your hats. Uh, try not to eat or drink during the service. We'll have a potluck when we're done. And uh, we will have Holy Communion. And of course, all are welcome to receive but none are required. So let's begin this service. Let's sing Lakota hymn 43. I need lots of good singers. So please stand and we'll sing this together. Jesus Christ, one kini. Ah, 
As you both please stand for the four direction song. <laughs> Begin by facing west. And then with each verse, we'll go the, the four directions, uh, each of the four directions, and the last two verses will face to the center. Yeah. 
Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, so that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. The message that spread throughout Judea, Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all 
that he did both in Judea, Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testified about him and that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. This is the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went with Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have laid him. And then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter, and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in, and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him, and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. <coughs> then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scriptures, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside of the tomb, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord. I do not know where they've taken him. And when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabbioni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said those things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, it is indeed a happy Easter. It even rained a little bit last night, and uh, it was been so warm yesterday, the day before, and uh, I almost dug out my swimming suit. Uh, better for all concerned, I didn't. 
But uh, what a beautiful way to, to do things. This has been a long, hard winter, and I'm not just talking about weather, though that's been long and hard and icky too. I'm so sick of snow. I was running out of places to put the snow whenever I'd have to go shovel. Uh, I was thinking about dumping it on the neighbor's yard, but uh, no, I didn't do that. It is a time for us to come together with our relatives to think about those who passed away, to reflect upon the importance of this day. Uh, I, I, one time I, taught, I was preaching a sermon in Rapid City at St. Matthew's, and I asked the children, I said, what are your two favorite holidays in the church? And of course, as you would expect, all the kids, they scream, Christmas! And it's like, well, what is Christmas then? Why, why do we do that? And they said, it's Jesus' birthday. They knew that. I was really happy. And I said, what's your second one? Easter! I said, what's, why do we celebrate Easter? You could hear crickets. Nothing. <laughs> Finally, this young boy, and he should have known better. He was sitting in the front row. He says, Easter Bunny's birthday? I said, you flunk. <laughs> But no, it is the day that Jesus rose from the dead. He was executed. He was murdered and, and tortured. It was really awful. And that's why this week prior to this is called Holy Week. Because in the church traditions, we walk with Jesus through these dark times. And we reflect upon that he did that for us and he did not deserve it. He never did anything wrong. He never said bad to anybody. He never lied. He never stole. He never even, uh, you know, he didn't do any of the things that we do all the time. And he did not need to be baptized. Uh, he did not need to confess his sins. He did not need to be punished because he never did those wrong things. And this is exactly what happened to him. And then when they murdered him on Friday, Friday, and then he's laid in the tomb. We have that, that dark, dark story of him and his last uh, moments on the cross and all the things that happened that led up to that. And then on Good Friday, upstairs, when they do that, uh, on Monday, Thursday, we have Eucharist. And then we, uh, they go and they take all the decorations down. If you've never been up in the worship space in the, in the main sanctuary, you should go up there. It's beautiful. I mean, they have the, uh, the brand new uh, mural, the paintings on the wall, and carving, and uh, beautiful silk hangings, investments. It's beautiful. It's just beautiful. This is a cathedral, after all. It should be beautiful. And then we, on, on Monday, Thursday, we take everything down. We cover up all the crosses, or the, all the ornate carvings we cover with with black cloths and veils so that you can't see it. And then we, we have the reserve sacrament that we use for emergencies. We open up that little door behind the altar and we take that out. And that's actually put in the chapel down the hall here. And then we leave in silence. We come back together on Good Friday and we pray again. We walk in in silence. We have communion from that reserve sacrament. And then we leave in silence. We venerate the cross. We recognize that. We hear the story of his, his crucifixion. And then we leave in silence again. And then the cool part, the cool service. And Lakotas love this service. If you've never gone, you should really go. It's really neat. It, is, it starts at 9 p.m. on this uh, last night, Saturday. I was wondering who was making that noise. It's me. And, uh, we, again, start in darkness, because it's called the Triduum, the three-day service. Can you imagine doing a church service three days long? Boy, that's hardcore. And it should be, because this is the most sacred time of the year. And it begins with uh, the, the beginning of Christ's passion. We walk through the days until finally we gather in the dark, all together. And Father Ward, he, he lights the new fire. There are new, no candles burning. And he lights the fire. He does it old school with a flint and steel. It's kind of neat. And this big flame comes up, and we all light our candles off of that, including the big one, the, the sanctuary candle. And the deep, there's all, it's a long service. It's beautiful. And gradually, 
the lights get brighter and brighter, just like we're coming to sunrise. Until finally we recognize the Lord is risen indeed when you say Alleluia and we ring bells and sing those beautiful Easter hymns. All the lights come on and we're, we can't see and we see the flowers, you know, it's so bright and all the decorations. And that's, that's why we do it. It's a little different here, but it's the same idea. Now, we are a Lakota congregation. We try to do things and think about things in a Lakota way. And I know Lakotas that, that won't come to church. They won't come. And I don't, I don't give them a hard time about it. They say, that's Washichu religion. I'm not going to do that. They have done nothing but, but be hard on my people. They killed my ancestors. Why should I go to church when that's Washichu religion? And yet, if we say that, we're giving the church, we're giving this religion to Wachichus. Now, they're part of it, yeah. But they do not own it any more than we do. And yet, if you consider all the Christians in the world, what does the average Christian look like? He looks like us. He is African or Asian. And if we define the word indigenous as living on the land of your ancestors, they are indigenous. They have more in common with us than the average white evangelical in this country. The, the problem is that white evangelicals have told us, this is our religion and you need to do it like us. And then God have mercy on us when we believe that. Because it's not true. We are the church. And we have more in common with Jesus Christ because he did things and his culture was so similar to how we do things. Consider his death. In the old days, pre-reservation days, when someone died, what did we do? We began to get ready for the ceremonies, the, the funeral rites. And what do we do? Well, if we're out on the prairie, we build a scaffold. We put the body up there where the animals can't get them. And we leave them there for a year. Otherwise, they could be in a tree. I have a good friend of mine. He, uh, he married a, a Lakota woman. And on her land, there is a cottonwood tree and kind of a lonely part of, of the property. And he said, up until a few years ago, there was a scaffold up there. The family never came and, and got the body. They, they didn't really know. He said, I never went up there to go look. I wasn't going to. And then just a few years ago, the tree actually fell. And, then, and of course, there's nothing left now. But my mother told a story that when my grandfather was still a priest, they found a scaffold. And the body was still there. And he... Uh, my grandfather, who was a priest, called some medicine men and some elders, and they talked about it, how, how should we do this? And so they went and they did a hunka ceremony for my grandfather and wherever this deceased person was. They didn't know who it was. And so grandfather adopted this person so then he could take the bones and put them in a box and then go bury them in a secret place. That's what they were planning to do with Jesus. They didn't have a scaffold or anything like that, but what they did have is a tomb, a hole in the rock that they would dig out. Now in the gospel reading it says it was a tomb that had never been used. Now that, if we think about it from a Lakota way of thinking, that sounds kind of, that's sort of gross. Why would you use a tomb again? Yeah, you know, and uh, no, no, that's not what they mean. You bury them in the tomb and then you come back in a year. In one year, just like we would do, or our ancestors would, they gather the bones and put them in a box, and then they are buried. And they actually have Jewish cemeteries where they are buried and protected. But the box is, is the same thinking that when we die, our spirit kind of hangs around. And if someone were to get a hold of your body parts, it could really cause you a lot of trouble, even on the other side. And so that's why they, they did that. You see, we have this in common. Likewise, 
when the moment you die, your soul kind of hangs around for about four days, right? That's why we, we have weights and things like that to prepare us, but also for the deceased to begin their journey as they cross over. And we, we like to say it takes like four days to walk on the Milky Way Road, that, that Chanku Wankam, that holy road to get to the other side. And uh, Jewish people believe that as well, that your soul kind of hung around. It is a sacred time. Now, they don't sit with the body like we do, but they do come together and they pray, and they fast, and they get family together, and the belief is still the same, that the deceased is with them in their presence, praying for them, helping them. Sound familiar? That's a way. That's, that's a Lakota-style way. So all these things that we have in common, but in Jesus' case, the thing that threw a wrench in it, that made it different, that made it so radically different that had never happened before, is that he came back to life. Now, one of the reasons why we have a wake and the belief is four days, we, we don't bury them or put them on the scaffold or whatever we do for four days, three to four days, is because when you live in a hot climate, you have a body setting out right about day three, there is no doubt that they are dead. You will know. Um, and and that's, that's, that is one, one very small reason why. It's not the most important reason, but it's a small reason. And so here he is. We know this. When Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead, they said, but Lord, he'd been in there three days. He's got to smell really bad. And he says, roll away the stone. And he calls him, and out he comes. So here Jesus rises from the dead, and Mary sees him. She has gone to prepare the body. They weren't allowed to do that. Now we get different readings in here, but because he... He died, uh, and it was a Sabbath, that Saturday, they weren't allowed to do work, including to prepare a body for burial. So here she comes, uh, Sunday morning, and she is going to prepare the body, and of course the stone is rolled away, he's gone, and she goes and tells Peter and the other guy, and they come, and he's gone. But she sees him, and he says, don't touch me, because it's not time yet. Not done doing my work on the other side. We also believe that that when people die right away, they begin to pray for us and to help us, especially as our hearts are broken and we are we are mourning, we are grieving. And so this is she didn't expect to see him. And uh, I I kid around like that. I, I said you know if I run into you at at Walmart or or V or something. And if I don't recognize you, it's because I'm kind of slow that way. I always say, if I run into my wife at Walmart, um, where did we meet? I know you. I mean. <laughs> and this is Mary's problem. She wasn't expecting to see Jesus. He's not supposed to be alive. And here he is. Here he is. And how, how amazing her response is when she finally clues in who it is. Teacher, it's you. And he says, go tell the others. I'm going to come back. And then we're going to have a party. We're going to have a dinner. We're going to celebrate. And then in the weeks to come, when you come back to church, we'll have more readings from the Acts of the Apostles. And they all talk about those early days of the church where everything was changed. Everything was different. Nothing would be the same again. The rules had changed. So when we refer to Jesus Christ as our elder brother, this is why. He was baptized for us even though he didn't need to be. He was uh, persecuted and murdered and executed for something he never did. He did all of this for us because this is what we deserve. But because he rose from the dead, as a strong man, so can we rise from the dead as his, as his younger siblings, his younger brothers and younger sisters. This is the most sacred time of the year. 
We're tempted to believe that Christmas is, and that is important. But no, this day, actually last night, was the most sacred time that we have. It is the moment that Christ rose from the dead. Now, one other thing I will tell you. I know there are a lot of us here today who are mourning. We've lost a lot of people this year. Even, even now I caught word that there was a grandfather that died in Iowa. And uh, I haven't heard what the arrangements are going to be like. But we've, we've all lost people. And it's really hard. But when Jesus had his last supper... And he does the part where he holds up the bread and he holds up the wine. And I will quote him and say, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. He says, no, that's not what he said. He said, do this at the same time I am doing it. And the reason why is he said it in Greek. Actually, he said it in Aramaic. And it doesn't translate well into English. There just aren't the right words. But Lakotas understand this idea of timelessness. That when there are times in our life when we will experience time getting slippery, when we can slide forwards or backwards and see things as a gift to us, uh, things that happened in the old times or things that happened in the future. And we will have absolute clarity as to how things work. And this is one of these moments. So when you miss your grandmother who died, your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your children, come to church and come up to receive Holy Communion. You put your hands forward like this, and put the bread in your hand, you eat it. And as you do that, at that moment, your loved one who died is literally right next to you. And Jesus is on the other side of you, receiving at the same moment you are. And this is why it is called Holy Communion, Holy Community. We are all relatives here. So we are able to be reunited, not just with our ancestors that we love and don't see anymore, but we will see them again. We are reunited. And this is a sacred time. <coughs> Viva Waka. Amen. All right. Let's do some baptisms. And let's see. So, uh, for our Baptist people, I need you to stand up and stand around here. Now, if we have any kids, you want to watch what we're doing? You can stand up here too and watch. So let's see, Miranda, uh, let's see, right there. And let's do the ones that make it. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Okay. So who who do we have then? Isaiah. Isaiah. Yeah. Yes. But they were baptized already, right? So we're going to renew it for them. That's fine. Yeah, sure. We'll do that. So we just have the one. Okay. And and this is Isaiah. No, credit. Oh, your ninja skills. You said I'm not. All right. So when it's time, we're going to need to take your pretty hat off. And uh, I'll have a uh, grandpa or a dad or somebody pick you up, and you're going to lean over here. And I'm going to sprinkle a little water on your forehead, right? Not yet. You don't have to do it yet. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you when. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you, but it's all right. It's all right. So we will follow along on this page here where you see it says sermon after that part. Follow along. Everyone else follow along because you have parts too. I'm going to ask you a question, so pay attention. Don't flunk church. <laughs> okay. And then I will see the candidates are now. Uh, 
the missing attendance, and you all say, I present Isaiah <coughs> Jezebel Blackbottom to receive the sacrament of baptism. Got it? All right. The candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. I present Isaiah Jezebel Blackbottom to receive the sacrament of baptism. Good. And I ask the parents and godparents, will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will with God's help. Will you by your prayers and witness help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will with God's help. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce that. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God. I renounce, renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept Him as your Savior? I do. And do you put your whole trust in His grace and love? I do. And do you promise to follow and obey Him as your Lord? I do. Now, this is a part for everyone else. I want a good, strong answer. Will all you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons and their life in Christ. We will. Good answer. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our baptismal covenant. This is a renewal process. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Let us now pray for this person and these persons who are to receive the sacrament, sacrament of new birth and are renewing their commitment to Christ. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. 
Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Okay. Isaiah. Isaiah. Yeah, I don't want to get the hat wet. We'll put it back on as soon as we're done. Okay. Now, just lean over here. Isaiah, Jezebel, I hope I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, it didn't even hurt. Celia, you are sealed as Christ alone forever. Amen. Okay, now let's pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and raised them to new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and a discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us in his eternal priesthood. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Absolutely. Let us share a sign of peace and congratulate these people as we set the altar. Okay, now. Oh, great, it's wrapped in plastic. This is to remind her of this day, the most important day of her life. Thank you. 
service we'll have a meal so uh, we need strong men and women to uh, get the tables out set them up and put the chairs around them if we want to do it in a way that we don't block exits and stuff like that and then we'll have a blessing uh, we'll bless the spirit plate we need to do that and, uh, and so we'll have a really nice Easter dinner and then we have we'll have an Easter egg hunt too and so that'll be a lot of fun do that and some other announcements we have some registration forms for summer camp Thunderhead Episcopal Center that is a really sacred place it's in the Black Hills and you never know what will happen there I met my bride there so a lot of people there but it's a really nice place if you've never gone they have a family camp uh, they're going to have an art camp and then a uh, an out what do they call it outdoor adventure camp. outdoor adventure camp. I have no idea what they do at an outdoor adventure camp, but it sounds fun. So uh, sign up and uh, don't worry about the registration fee if that's a problem. Uh, pretty much every kid that goes has their registration subsidized, so don't worry about that. Everybody's welcome, and it's a lot of fun. Then. The uh, diocese, thank you very much. Boy, what a good helper. And we need camp counselors. Yeah, we do need some camp counselors. Uh, Lapota ones are especially welcome. So if you're interested, talk to me after the church or talk to Barb, and we'll get you hooked up. Um, tomorrow, the uh, church office will be closed. be open again on Tuesday. And... Um, I and uh, Father Ward and all the clergy are going to be laying low uh, this week. <laughs> we're a little crispy, and, and uh, but we'll survive where we're doing this time. Um, and let's see, we're uh, we're still getting ready for rummage. They continue collecting Monday morning at 9 a.m. And uh, we also, but uh, oh, they are going to do it this Monday. Okay. That's hardcore. All right. Then um, the cathedral is getting ready to have a softball team. If you are age 16 or older and would like to play in the cathedral softball team, uh, we'll hook you up with the right people. There's a phone number in your bulletin, Chris Clem in particular. And uh, we started that, what did they say, 28 years ago? And I remember that. I, I showed up for the first day of practice. I didn't warm up, and I was going to throw the ball. And I swear to God, I heard something in my shoulder go, <laughs> end of my softball career. Anyway, but we have a lot of good players, and it's a lot of fun. And uh, we usually just cream those other churches. So uh, that's our goal this year. <laughs> In the love of Christ, of course, we'll, we'll beat the pants off on that. We're ready to come to play or come to watch. Yeah, all right, or come to watch. I like, I love a good baseball game. Okay. That's, I think, all the news fit to print. Let's sing the doxology. Thank you. And as you call, let's sing.
Tukashula Wakantaka is here. God's Spirit never leaves us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us always offer our thanks. It is right to offer thanks and glory. It is right, it is good, and it is joyful to always offer our thanks to you, our Creator Tukashula, for all your gifts and all of creation. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, for he is a true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. <clears throat> by his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with all the faithful spirits, sacred beings, and all of our relatives on earth and in heaven who offer this song of praise. Waka, waka, waka. We chose the early pancha makantanka. Makpia elman nito vitangi o jula. Wo vitalu hanue i pancha eo Dukashila, you loved your creation so much that when it was time, you sent your chaske, Jesus Christ, to complete our adoption with the rest of your creation through his baptism and ours. We now stand with your creation as your humble children. Help us to see you and all of our relatives within this ceremony so that we may serve the world through our prayers and actions. <clears throat> In the beginning, we wandered in darkness, and through, through your care and calling, we entered into the sunlight, where we joined the rest of your creation. You provided for our needs, teaching us how to live by always seeking your voice. And when it was time, you sent your Wonia Waka, your Holy Spirit, to bless our Ini Waka, Mary, with the birth of your Chaske, Jesus Christ, so that we might never walk alone again. He taught us how to pray, how to heal, and how to mature as his brothers and sisters. When it was time, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his relatives and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this with me and with all our relatives. <coughs> After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new adoption, which is shed for you and for all of our relatives for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this with me and with all our relatives. <coughs> Dukashila invites us to pray. We thank you. We praise you. We offer ourselves to you. We make our offering to you with a humble heart, giving you these <coughs> gifts of bread and wine. We ask you to send your Woniwakam to bless these offerings, that they would be the ceremonial food of the body of Christ and his blood of the new adoption. Help us to stand with your son, your Chaske Jesus, so that we might be good children in your creation, being made holy by your Woniwakam. And when it is time, return to us so we might always stand with all of your relatives as a sacred people. By Jesus, with Jesus, and in Jesus, in completion of Tukashula's creation, all glory and honor is yours now and forever. Amen. And ours, our Savior, has taught us to pray, A te oyapi, machpia ekta nakechi. Ni chaje wakana binue, ni toke choje unue, machbia ekta ni tawachi e chompiki. E echa maka akal e chompi nue. Ampetu eopi a huopiki, ampetu kile un kupie. Natona e chishnea, e chaunki chipi, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ your chaske waka is sacrificed for us, Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith for thanksgiving. Okay. This is how we're going to do it. We go this way. I'll be here with the bread. Uh, Barb will be here with the wine. We'll just go clockwise. Now, no one is required to have communion. When you come up to me, put your hands like this to receive the bread. If you don't want to receive communion, but you would like to receive a blessing, put your arms like this. And that's the secret sign that tells me that you're there for a blessing. I'll pronounce God's blessing, and then you can go sit down. Uh, you don't have to have the wine. We do use real wine. But if you do receive it, take the base of the cup so Barb doesn't spill it down your shirt. And just take a sip. If you'd like to dip your wafer, you may. Just the tip of the wafer. I always say don't go down to the third knuckle. That'd be bad. Just the tip. That's fine. And then you can be seated. <coughs> You guys can just start. There you go. Please touch on the book. Please touch on the book if you want that. Please touch on the book.
by your trustee, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with the sacred food and the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Send us into the world in peace, taking your spirit with us, so we might serve all we meet as holy relatives. Make us strong and brave to love and serve you, with happiness and peace devoted to you, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Wakantaka Yotawa Shaka, Toyawa Shiki, A Teapi King, a Chihito King, a Moria Wakan King, the Apio, now the Opia, Ohino Unawe. Amen. All right, let's sing Lakota Ham 46. Sing it like you mean it. Alleluia. No, that's not right. Oh, this is awful. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought we did. We sung it last year. We probably butchered it last year, too. Let's sing the first one again. <laughs> I apologize for that. That's just embarrassing. Okay. Let's do the uh, first two verses of uh, 43 then. Jesus Christ, one Ah, uh, who need be 
go peace, rejoicing with the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you all for coming. Now we're going to set up tables, so I need help to kind of deconstruct stuff, and we will have our meal. All right, kids, go to the door. Get ready for the Easter day. That's you, Easter. Sorry, don't you do it. Look, Beeper, Beeper. Beeper, Beeper.